In order to discuss quantile tests, we need to first understand what a quantile is. Another word for quantile is a percentile. The pth percentile is a value within a set of numbers that when order from smallest to largest, p percent of the data fall below it. For example, the 50th percentile is the median. In this case, we know that 50% of the data fall below the median. A quantile test is a form of the binomial test for which we can use to make inference upon percentiles. We will use the binomial test as is if the distribution of the data is continuous. If it is discrete we will still use some form of the binomial test, only we will have to modify. Let's look at the null hypothesis for a quantile test. The null hypothesis in this case is that the value in question does indeed have the hypothesized proportion P0 of the data fall below it. This is the same as having the null hypothesis as some proportion equal to some null proportion. This is why we can use the binomial test. Let's look at the assumptions here. We need to assume that each of the Xi are independent and identically distributed and that the measurement scale of the data is at least ordinal. Now let's look at the test statistic. For quantile tests, we will have two test statistics. T1 will be the number of observations less than or equal to the hypothesized quantile value. T2 will be the number of values less than the hypothesized quantile value. T1 equals T2 if no observation is equal to the hypothesized quantile. Otherwise T1 T2. Now let's look at an upper-tailed test. The upper tail test is such that we are checking to see if the true quantile is actually less than the hypothesized value. If the alternative is true, then that leads to the hypothesized quantile value would actually have a larger percentage of the data fall below it than we hypothesized. Let's look at how we make our decision. For the upper tail test, we determine T2 in the same manner that we did for the binomial test, which is by determining the value that makes the probability statement on the slide true. This is utilizing the binomial distribution with the sample size as n and p0 as pi. We then reject when t2 equals t2. We determine the p-value by finding the probability that x is greater than or equal to the observed value t2. Now let's look at the lower tail test. The lower tail test is the one where we are checking to see if the true quantile is greater than the hypothesized value. The probability statement means that the true percentage of values that fall below our hypothesized value is actually less than P0, so the true quantile would need to be larger than our hypothesized value. Let's take a look at how we make our decision. For the lower tail test, we will first need the lower tailed critical value T1 and then we will reject when T1 less than or equal to T1. We can also calculate the p-value as the probability that x less than or equal to t1 using the binomial distribution again with n being the sample size and pi being the hypothesized value p0. Now let's look at the two-tail test. The two-tail test is the not equal to alternative. This equates to either the hypothesized quantile is larger or smaller than the true value. So either one or the other of the probability statements on the slide hold true. How do we make our decision for a two-tailed test? Here we will reject the null if t1 less than or equal to t1 or if t2 greater than or equal to t2. In this case, we will need to find t1 and t2 utilizing alpha1 and alpha2 as close to alpha slash 2 as possible so that alpha1 plus alpha2 is as close to alpha without going over. This makes our test conservative. The p-value becomes twice the smaller of the one-tailed probabilities. Then we reject when p-value less than or equal to alpha. Now let's do an example. Entering college freshmen have taken a high school achievement test. The upper quartile for this test is well established at 193. A sample of 15 scores from this test are given below. Does this idea still hold? Use A equals 0.05. For this example, upper quartile means the 75th percentile. Based on the statement in the problem, we can assume that the test is two-tailed since they want to know if the idea that the 75th percentile is 193 still holds. Here is the data. Notice here that we do have one value that is 193. This means that T1 T2. Let's look at some details. We are hypothesizing that the 75th percentile is equal to 193 versus not equal. 
We assume that under the null, the distribution is binomial with n equals 15 and pi equals 0.75. We would also like the for alpha 1 and alpha 2 to be as close to 0.025 as possible. Now we can use the distribution in alpha 1 and alpha 2 to find t1 and t2. Here is the binomial distribution. Notice that in this case, the closest probabilities to 0.025 and 0.975 are 0.0173 and 0.9886. This gives us values of 7 and 14 for T1 and T2 respectively. Now let's assess our decision. Based on the data, we find that T1 equals 7 and T2 equals 6. Since the alternative is two-sided we need to check for either tailed criteria. Since T1 equals T1, we know that we will reject the null. We can also calculate a p-value. We know that the p, x less than or equal to 7, equals 0.0173. We took that from the binomial table on the previous slide. We can find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 by finding 1 p, x less than or equal to 5, equals 0.9992. Now we take two times the minimum of those two probabilities and that is the p-value. In this case, it's 0.0346. So we reject since that is less than 0.05. Both methods tell use the reject the null. Based on the evidence presented and a 5% error rate, the true 75th percentile is not 193. Now we want to create confidence intervals for this test. In order to do that, we need to understand what order statistics are. Class of statistics where we work with the elements arranged from smallest to largest. An order statistic of rank k, x, k, is the statistic that takes as its value the kth smallest element in the sample. For example, x, 1, the order statistic of rank 1, is always the smallest element of the sample as its value. Now let's use the order statistics to find confidence intervals for the quantile. For quantiles, the confidence interval is the set of order statistics that make the probability statement in the slide true. Notice that are less than s and both need to be less than or equal to n and greater than or equal to 1. Now how do we find the values? Here are the steps. Determine the values for R1 and S1 for values alpha 1 equals alpha 2 equals alpha slash 2, if possible. Now add 1 to those two numbers to get R and S. Now find the confidence limits as the RTH and STH order statistics. The coverage in this case would be 1 dash, alpha 1 plus alpha 2. We want this to be at least 1 alpha. Let's try it. Let's use the technique that we just learned to find the 95% confidence interval for the 75th percentile for the achievement scores. First we need to determine R1 and S1. We will use the binomial distribution with n equals 15 and pi equals 0.75. That distribution is given on the screen. We need to find the values with probability as close to 0.025 and 0.975 as possible. Based on the table, R1 equals 7 and S1 equals 14. So in this case, alpha 1 equals 0.0173 and alpha 2 sad face 1 to 0.9866 equals 0.0134. Now we get R equals 8 and S equals 15. Next we order the observations from smallest to largest and take the 8th and 15th order statistics as our confidence limits. Based on that, the interval becomes 195,248, with exact confidence level 0.9693. Let's draw conclusions. We are 96.93% confident that the true 75th percentile score is between 195 and 248. Notice that 193 is not in the interval. Since we rejected the null hypothesis with error rate 5%, we would expect that the hypothesized value would not fall into the confidence interval. Let's assume that we want to run a test for the median. Recall that this is the 50th percentile. If the data is normal, then the median and mean are equal. So in that case, we could use a quantile test to test the hypothesis that the mean of a distribution is equal to some hypothesized value. We know that when the data is normal, we typically use a one-sample t-test to do this. So which test is better? We can decide this using relative efficiency. Relative efficiency is used to compare sample sizes of one test to another under similar conditions. 
so it is used to compare tests with the same null, alternative, alpha, and power. The test with smaller sample size is said to be more efficient than the other test and its relative efficiency is greater than 1. How do we find it? Let a 1 and a 2 represent two tests that test the same null against the same alternative, with the same alpha and power. The relative efficiency of a 1 to a 2 is the ratio n2 slash n1, where n1 and n2 are the sample sizes of tests a 1 and a 2 respectively. So basically we will compare the sample size to see which test when all things are equal costs less. Let's look at some examples. Let's assume that we have two tests. Each have the same hypotheses, alpha and power. Now the sample sizes are given as 75 for test 1 and 50 is test 2. Let's determine the relative efficiency of the second test to the first. Assume that the efficient of the first test to the second is 0.75. All else being equal, what is the necessary sample size for n2 if n1 equals 40? Here are the solutions. Notice that the RE for test 2 to 1 is the ratio of n1 e n2. So think about it as if we want the RE for test a versus b, then we want to see what proportion of the sample size for a does the sample size for b make up. If the proportion is greater than 1, then test a is more efficient than test b. If the proportion is less than 1, then test B is more efficient than test A. For question 1, the RE is 1.5. This means that we need a sample size 50% bigger if we choose to use test 1 instead of test 2. For part 2, we find that for all things being equal, alpha, beta, etc., we only need a sample size of 30 for test 2. Let's draw conclusions. Relative efficiency can be used to compare tests using sample size. It can also be used to determine the sample size needed for a given test. That is great for a given alpha, beta and alternative hypothesis, but what if we want an overall comparison? We need to have a way to compare tests independent of alpha, beta and the alternative. We will do this using asymptotic relative efficiency, R. R allows us to compare tests generally. Keeps alpha and beta constant and looks at the limit of n2 slash n1 as n1 goes to infinity for each of the tests based on the sequence of alternatives. Higher our values lead to the more powerful test. So we should use the test that yields the higher r. Let's use r to compare the quantile test for the median to the one sample t test. It all depends on the distribution of the data. If it is normal, the r for the quantile test to the t test is 0.637. If the underlying distribution is a light-tailed symmetric distribution, such as uniform, the ARA quantile test to the t-test is 0.333. For a heavy-tailed symmetric distribution like the double exponential, the R jumps to 2. So what does this mean to us? Although all three distributions were symmetric, the quantile test is a more powerful test when the distribution is heavy-tailed. For ordinal data, non-symmetric or heavy-tailed symmetric distributions, use the quantile test, median. Otherwise, use the t-test.